Hi, everyone. I'm Dylan McGee, founder and executive producer of Makers, and welcome to Makers at Home. And I am so excited about our guest today, Deborah Messing. Um, you know Deborah, actor, producer, director, feminist, activist, maker, um, and so many other things. And of course, Will and Grace, after 11 seasons, just came to an end. It's breaking my heart. So anyway, I'm excited to check in with Deborah and hear how she's doing, um, what she's been doing, uh, you know, talk about the end of Will and Grace, and of course, be inspired by, um, you know, all the causes that mean so much to her. So let's bring Deborah on, get your questions ready. Here we go. All right, Deborah, coming to you. There she is. Waiting. I know I'm coming. Hi. Hi, Deborah. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm so great. Look at you. Um, yeah, this is what happens in a a uh, quarantine. I mean, go no for need, it. no need for for straightening irons anymore. This is the real <laughs> Deborah Messing. I like this, it. This is it. This is me. I mean, even I get to see. Like, let's be honest. Do we get to see some roots? Like, look at mine. Yeah. Look yeah. at that. I know. Yours not, looks so good. God, not, you look good. Not very pretty, but we you know, we're doing what we got to do. And you're in New York, right? I'm in New York. You too? Are you? I'm outside of New York in Westchester. You're lucky. Right. You I'm get lucky. to go outside, right? I, I do. I yeah. do. I get to walk. Are you going outside? No. Not at all. No. See, I'm this is my window. Yep. And um, and every every night at seven, I hit oh. the, the pots and pans, and we put hearts on our windows oh and thank yous, and and we and now we do it with our neighbors across the way who we'd never met before ever, and now every night we wave. <laughs> no, you um, but you know, all the time, I just right up right out my outside my apartment, I hear the sirens constantly, and you know, I'm I'm a good girl. I follow I follow directions, so. Um, you know, I've been watching Cuomo, and Cuomo's yeah. just been like, yep. only if there's an emergency, do you do you leave the house? So, um, and you're there you know, with your son, right? My son is has been going back and forth between me and his dad in Brooklyn. Great. And uh, so, you know, he has a mask and gloves, and we have a whole protocol. You know, when he when he gets home, and um, yeah, yeah. Well, I, and it, are you feeling like, I mean, amazing. We've got people from Finland joining in, Hungary. Hi, Finland. Hi, Deborah. Philippines. Hi, Philippines. Oh, and they love Thank your glasses. Thank you. Yeah. And, they're, and they're, they're, they're out of whack. And so it's just going to stay like this until I can get to my eye doctor and have it fixed because I've got uneven eyes. I, so. Do you know what's so funny? I have uneven ears. I someone on our team said, Dylan, your glasses are off. And I was like, well, when I put them normally. Yeah, they're off. They're See off. Me too. My so, ears too. So what See do that? you know? We're the same now. We're the same thing. I mean, I think that means that there must be some like positive thing that means if you have uneven ears. We must be smarter. <laughs> we must be. <laughs> we definitely must be. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, so I want to know what things you've been doing. Like, have you been, I know you're a reader. Have you been reading a lot? Yes. Um, right now, I am three quarters of the way through this. Oh, my God. So, which, wait, no, wait, you know it's backwards. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, it's by Lauren Groff, G-R-O-F-F. -F. It's called okay. Florida. And it's, it's intense. Um, she wrote... Um, this other book, Fates and Furies, that blew my mind. So I immediately just looked up her other books. I also read um, my my what Vanessa? My yes, my dark Vanessa. And my dark all Vanessa, night, all night till seven in the morning. <laughs> and then um, American. Oh, good God, American. It's it's happening. 
It's happening. The senility you know is happening. It doesn't matter because you have uneven ears. So it's just, we know <laughs> you're smart and it doesn't matter. Yes. Yeah, so you um, watching or do you read or do you watch anything? Oh, oh, I do. I do everything. Oh, Are you kidding? Good. Um, I watched, um, I know I'm going to get the title wrong. Um, hundred little fires, lots yes, of little fires, little fires every everywhere. <laughs> I that am kind of day. I'm a mess. Um, yes, and um, I love that. And I watched Ozark. I it's my obsession. So when it came back on, I I literally just did one did of those whole, whole things. I did the whole thing, and then I was bereft when it was over. I was like, how can it be over? I mean, and then and now, but I'm excited because this week Billions came back, <laughs> and. Billions, Billions, and Ozark, and Succession. Those are my three favorite. Okay. And um, so... It's so true. interesting you're watching tapes. Like, so you like those sort of, like, gritty, like, yeah. Yeah, dark. Dark. Dark, dark gritty, you know, family, relationships, yeah. you know. Um, Why? Yeah, I don't, I, you know, I... It's so funny. You would think I'd want to laugh right now. Yeah, that's what um, I'm thinking. You know, I think because my son is all comedy all the time. Mm -hmm. So I think I've watched literally every comic film since 1975 with him. Um, and it just, and he will watch them over and over and over again. Like St Step Brothers, We've, <laughs> I've had to have seen it 10 times in the last four weeks. Um, so I feel like, you know, when, when I'm you have your watching, time, I need my time. Yeah. And yes. I think, and I think also, I'm just so used to, you know, working at, when your day job is comedy, you want the opposite when you get home. So interesting. Yeah. So interesting. Because it's in your mind and then you're like, you're analyzing and you're thinking about the musicality and, you know, and you're like, uh, uh, I just want to like turn it all off. So. Now, I know your son isn't there, but there's a little four-legged friend. Look at him. There. Who is that? Henry. Hi, Hi Henry. Hi, Boo-Boo. Does Henry like all these shows, too? Does he like what? Does he watch these shows with you? Is he by your side? No, he, he, he doesn't watch a lot. He's, <laughs> oh, there he goes. He goes back to sleep. <laughs> yep. Um, he's, he guards me. He guards. Um. You know, and then now he likes to sit out here. Now that I've opened up the little Juliet window, he'll sit and look down on New York City and see what's going on. Oh. Um, yeah, but he, I honestly, I can't imagine being in quarantine without a dog. I mean, I, I've been, I'm a dog person. I've had a dog my entire life. But the kind of comfort that he brings, is like right now, it it's just very unique it you know it's different than a human being and um I just hi hi everybody oh, hi. um yeah oh, I just I feel grateful I feel really grateful that I have him yeah he's it looks like a cutie and I've heard him on a couple things barking and yes yes he is protective of you oh hello from Germany I love you so much Deborah you are just like have so many fans look at this hi everybody well you guys get ready I want to talk about Will and Grace so think about what okay. questions you want to ask about Will and Grace because she Deborah likes to watch the dark and you know, I do I like to watch Will and Grace all but, right okay well, can I can I can I, before yeah. we do that can I just tell you um two things that I have just started in quarantine in okay. order um music okay music has been very helpful for me and so I used to play piano when I was 10 and then I stopped and now oh, no. I'm learning piano again I have those books I know those books you do yes I still can't play but don't let that discourage you I am playing every day you and are? I'm uh, yes, and I'm like doing it. I'm doing my hand things, and do, I'm. Just, do you have a piano or a keyboard? I have a piano. Yeah. So is it? Are you like three blind mice, or are you playing? Da, 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 no, da, da, I keyboard? I can play like a a simple Moonlight Sonata. You know. Really? Yeah. Yeah. 
but you know, it's like, it's always frustrating because you want to be able to do more. And so like, I, I have all these apps where you can look up and you can download all the music. And I'm, I, I don't even know how much money I've spent on that. <laughs> and then when I get bored with that, I bought this. Oh my God, Deborah! no, no, no. <laughs> what, what? Might you a like ukulele for us? Give us a little lick. Come on. I bought a ukulele. Well, let's hear it. <laughs> hey, you're good already. Yes, so there's an app for that. There's an app for everything. Um, there's an app, and so I'm, I'm, learning, I'm learning how to play the ukulele on this app. I love it. I love it. If you didn't yes. have to hold your phone at the same time, we would we'd actually like force you to play a song for us. Yeah, you can do it like on your iPad and they like they walk you through the fingering and and it can hear you play back and it'll say, nope, try again. No. Nope. Yes. You an app that tells you if you're good or not? Like, oh, that's not working? Yeah. It turns, it turns red if you didn't do it right and it turns green if you did. <laughs> Mine would be red a lot. I don't know why these things didn't exist when we were kids. No, we had to pluck and figure it out ourselves. I know. Or have a teacher come or, I don't yeah. know about you, but I was like, I played piano, but I, I never practiced. And Darlene! Oh, I'm saying hi to Darlene. She did my hair on, uh, on Will and Grace. She did? Oh, yes. Darlene. Are you so proud of how she looks right now, too? Darlene, look at this. Darlene. I mean, I mean, come on. You know me, I would never, ever go out like this because I, you know, I look like a poodle and oh I, I can't, I can't control it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's sending me. She likes it. Okay. She likes it. She said, as long as she likes it, I get her approval. That's all I care about. <laughs> I mean, did she do your Lucy hair? She did. It. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, Darlene. Gosh. Yes. She did the, the Lucy hair and it blew my mind. I mean, I mean did, you, did you look at yourself and go, I look, I mean, I could not differentiate between the two of you. I was in shock. I mean, you know, I, I, I feel like I, you know, I grew up with her. I've idolized her. She has been like everything to me. And then all of a sudden to have like, you know, hair and makeup and wardrobe and props and everybody just like pull out all stops. And then all of a sudden they were done and the reveal and literally like I couldn't speak. Mm. And then our, our showrunner Max came down to look and he screamed. He went, ah! and he's like, no. everybody come down. But it was when it was when Lucy Arnez saw me oh, that I right. that 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 was really powerful. Oh my God. I mean, did you burst into tears? Um, it was very hard for me not to start crying. She, yeah. she walked in and she saw me fully done and she did, she smiled and she didn't say anything. And then she walked up to me and hugged me and then said, this feels really good. It's been a long time. Oh my God. And, and I pulled away and I had to go to do like the little dance number. And I walked away and she said, break a leg mom. And that, yes. <laughs> That was when everybody broke into Ugh. tears. Everybody broke into tears when she said that. And had um, it been some, I mean, she hadn't given anyone permission to do anything for a long time or ever. Nev never. 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 In the, in never. She has, she and her brother have never given any, anyone permission to replicate, um, you know, any of their iconic scenes. And she said, you know, this would be the, the time to do it and so she graciously let us do those scenes and they were shot for shot and literally every like single, kind of everything it was identical in fact my vitamin to vegemin scene yeah. the bottle i held was lucy's bottle oh come on it was the actual bottle the actual the sets felt the same the actual bottle yes yes and, and was, did you watch that scene over and over and over. How long did you have to prep? It was something short. A week. Oh my god. Oh my god. I no, had a I week. Don't. I had a week to do that, and and Fred, and Ethel. All of them. 
and learn the, the, the dance number. And learn yes. the lines. And learn all the lines, yes. And, um, you know, and that was a seven minute scene. That was no joke. Like they Which don't- It doesn't do, happen anymore in television, Never, right? like, they do not do that anymore. They don't trust actors to do that anymore. <laughs> they don't. They're like, okay, they can only handle so much. Let's just give them like three minutes and then get them out. Um, yeah, but it was, I did. I, I watched it over and over and over and over again and sort of trying to, trying to mark, you know, when, you know, when an eyebrow went up, when a head tilt, <laughs> you know, and just exactly when the drunkenness started to kick in and when it escalated. And then when I was on set and I couldn't watch it, I listened to it. Oh my God. So, cause her voice is much higher than mine. Mm -hmm. So I was listening to it like music, you know, trying to get that in my ear. I mean, I cannot believe that was a week. That was, I felt like I was reliving my childhood in that moment, just like it. I mean, that is, phenomenal it was it was the it was the the greatest thing I've ever and the hardest thing I've ever had to do but it was I mean just a just such a privilege well you're such now that I know you're such a night owl and did you sleep that week no 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 I did not sleep which made it much worse because right. you know when you're over 40 you know the memory isn't as good as it was when you're 20 and um you know, it, it, I was, I was really anxious. I, I had, you know, I had really high expectations of myself. You were I amazing. didn't want to let anyone down. I didn't want to let Lucy Arnaz Lucy. down. I mean, you know, it was, it was a, lot. a lot of pressure. It's a it lot was a of lot of pressure. And I, and I, I'm really proud of the oh, way it, yeah. it came out. What, what did it feel like? I mean, when you were done, were you like, <laughs> um, it felt uh it's it felt um it's not the word not magical but it, it felt like we had been anointed mm -hmm. with something that was so precious yeah and we had done it and she, and lucy was thrilled with it and moved by it you know like when i finished my vitamin regimen she came over to hug me and she was crying oh my god and, you know, and, and so to get that kind of um, response and yeah. sort of gratification, it was, it, it was intense. Well, people are saying, blessed, we love you, the best thing ever. Oh. I mean, it really was. I hope you win every Emmy for that. I mean, I won't. Takes to <laughs> I won't. You do in our eyes. You got, the, guess what? And the winner of the Maker's Emmy Deborah Metzen. Oh my God, thank you so much. That's so nice. <laughs> I've seen at least five times what make is your glasses. It's, I can't, I'm not French. Uh, Fasse a Fasse. So F A C E A F A C E. That's what the glasses are. Okay. Okay. Good. I've got to write that down too. F A C because it's e. face. Oh, face. A face. Face a face. <laughs> Oh, so, so fancy. I'm sure it's Fache, Fache. Yes, yes. Um, so what was it like having Will and Grace end during quarantine? It ended before quarantine. Oh, it was right before? We, no, 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 you, the filming Christmas. Did. No, but you had to like, but you got to watch, didn't you? Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. and and we, and we had to do some press for it, and we had to do it through Zoom, and and that was yeah. um, that was very weird. But um, I think, you know, I I just feel like we were so lucky to have been able to wrap it up something that was oh. so important before the quarantine hit. Because if it if we had had to shut down before we did that, I. I I don't know what would have happened. Because you were on a train that was moving and kind of like getting. Yes. 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 And I was coming home to start a, a Broadway play. So, right. you know, like there was a whole thing happening. So, you know, when we when we finished it, it's interesting. The first time we wrapped in 22 years ago or no, not 22 years ago, um, 15 years ago, uh, it felt it felt like a death. I mean, it felt so 
intense and scary because we had been together for eight years. We'd grown up together. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we weren't going to have each other anymore. And we were going to like, you know, a generation later, we were going to be entering into the world. And so it felt really scary. Yeah, I think now because we've all gone off and done movies and plays and, and music and everything. I think we, you know, we all feel like we, we know our value. We know we're going to be fine. This was you know, icing on the oh, cake. Someone was coming to see your play. Oh. Well, maybe you still can. When, is it going to happen? Well, they said that they're, they're intending to do it in the fall whenever it becomes possible. We were two weeks into rehearsal of a four-week rehearsal. And what's, what's the play? It's a brand new play. It's called Birthday Candles by Noah Heidel. And I play a woman who ages from 17 to 107, and I never leave the stage. Oh, my God. You are a glutton for punishment. You're like, bring on the next challenge. I was wow. like, I was like, I read it, and it blew my mind. And I was like, that's the scariest thing I've ever read. And then I was like, I got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> sort of like Grace. So, um, oh, someone asked, oh my God. So Deborah, when you may not remember, but when you did your makers, um, piece, I asked you a favor. I said, my assistant who wants to be a producer, Will Ventura is, yes, he came out because of you. And yes. He did his first interview ever with Deborah Messing. I remember. Do you remember? I do. And he, so his question for you is he wants to know if you took any props home from the set. Are there any in your house? Oh, gosh. Um, let me think. Um, well, I got a replica of the Vitamita Benjamin oh, you bottle. You know, they had a bunch of replicas in the back. So I have one of those. And... Um, I wanted the I wanted the framed picture of the sad man. Um, yeah, yes. about that. I know the what? sad man. Everybody wanted the sad man, and um, it ended up going to Bob Greenblatt, who used to be the president of NBC, who was responsible for bringing the show back. Oh, that's um, cool. yeah. But uh, yeah, but I have I have. Let's see if any of your of my fans recognize this. Yes. All right, everybody, chime in. Anybody know where that's from? I'll give it's you a hint. Okay. It was on the first round of Will and Grace. Oh, my God. Anybody? I bet, I bet nobody gets it. If somebody gets it, I'm going to, like, literally fall off my chair. <laughs> <laughs> well, people love their dogs. And that was a horse, right? That was a horse. And you want oh, me to tell you? Grace's Brooklyn apartment. It was! Oh my God, it was Leo's apartment. It was Leo's, it was Leo's. And then I moved in and oh my God, I can't believe people remember that. That's amazing. Oh my God. And you know, when that show ended, my son was like a year and a half. So I wanted the picture so I could put it outside his bedroom in the hallway. Oh, that is the best. Yeah. That is the best. Show it again, okay. Oh my gosh. And I don't know if that was you, Will, or who that was, but I think we have to find out who you are and, and there should be a prize. Yeah, totally. Uh, Deborah will play a ukulele song for you. Who will? No, you will for whoever guessed it. Oh, I, I, need, I need a little practice. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. So, I mean, what? so the play is next. Any the other? Play, the play is next. Um, I have, I finished a movie, a small movie called The Dark Divide. Um, that is the true story of a, let me see if I can pronounce this, a lapidopterist. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna have to work on that. I need to work on it yeah. before we start promoting it. Um, you know, the premier expert on butterflies in the world he's a, an older gentleman now 
Um, but he was married to a, a woman who died of cancer. And he had wanted to go out into this, this dense wood between Oregon and Washington. Okay. Um, and just try and find new species, but he was scared to. And what, what you find out is that the woman before she dies, she applies for a grant for him and it comes through after she died. And so he had to go out on it and he ended up getting lost and being in the woods for six weeks. But he came back and he found all these new species. So I played the woman who has cancer, which oh. was a really difficult, Oof. a really difficult, um, um, and, and preparing for it, I read the most amazing memoir. It's called The Unwinding of the Miracle. Okay, so, I gotta write all these down, Unwinding of the Miracle. Okay. It's, it's, so, it's so amazing. It's, it's okay. uh, a, a woman, a New Yorker, um, who has passed, but she had cancer and she, she writes about the whole experience. And um, it's really an amazing book. Um, so there's that. And then I had a tiny little part in a um, Stephen Carell, Rose Byrne, Chris Cooper, Topher Grace comedy um, written and directed by Jon Stewart. Um, I basically play Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Um, oh, really? <laughs> oh, that's so good. Um, yeah, and I was, I went for it. I was like, oh, no, no, no. We need gel. We oh need God. gel. And we need the eyeshadow. And we need, like, I, I was like, we're going for it. Um, when is that coming out? It's, I, I don't know when it's coming out. It was supposed to come out, I think, in May. Oh, my it's God. Re it's really funny. Oh, Deborah, that is going to be so good. It's really I'm funny. Sure. It's, you know, it's about a, a Democratic op operative who goes out to a red community and tries to find a candidate that <laughs> that will run and bring in democrats and um yeah it's perfect i mean yeah i mean hello yeah deborah messing yeah so there's um, that and then okay. um and then just sort of doing what i can to help um biden yeah you know Get, get a little decency back in, back into our lives. Do you know the opening of your Maker's piece? You talk about how Biden um, commented about Will and Grace and how it had, Will and Grace had done more than any legislation ever had. Yes. It it's all comes amazing. full circle. Isn't it's it amazing? Circle. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Well, I actually, I actually um, campaigned for Obama and um, I was in Pe I was in Pennsylvania the night before the election with Bi with Biden. Um, that was when I the first time I met him at one of his rallies. I was on I was in a bus, you know, going around the state um, with. Oh, my God, I can't remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> they call All right. Him they called him the mayor of Pennsylvania, like one of the most famous Democratic operatives in Pennsylvania. He was the mayor for like ever. Anyway, um, I, I went with him and uh, it was a very special time. So, you know, I, I'll just I'll just keep doing my thing. And trying people to get... want to know if there's going to be a, a, a smash too. Oh, my God. Wouldn't that be amazing? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yes. Guess yes. what? Guess what's going to happen? What? Next week, I believe it's the 12th, we are going to have a um, airing of the one night only live event we did on Broadway. No. That was Smash. And it was all of the cast singing all of the songs, big dance numbers. And uh, Christian Borrell and I did some reading of Marilyn Monroe. And... Uh, so in order to try and raise money for COVID, um, it's going to be aired and all of the cast members are going to be online. So Ooh. you can say hi to all of us smashies. And so I where mean, do we I, watch I, this? What's People, that? Where, where can we see this? Do you know? Um, I will find out. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Come to Makers Women, everybody. We will tweet it out. We'll let you know. Yes, and yes. Deborah will too. 
<laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, but I mean, I loved, I loved Smash so much and I would go back in a heartbeat. Oh God, I was so good. Um, and it says when, people are saying when, so it sounds like it's I May think it's 12th. the 12th. I think it's May 12th, it's May next 12th. week. And I think it's, or wait a minute, with, no, 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 hold please. The twelfth is when I think I'm recording it. I'm recording it. Okay, I'll I'll get I'll get it to you. It's gonna be within the month. And I saw one of the guests just say, "Do you have a favorite song that you remember from Smash?" Oh, um, well, I mean, um, you know, uh, the, the the opening number of "Let Me Be Your Star" is like the most iconic. But if I could sing any song in of all of them. It would be um, keep moving the line. It's that eleven o'clock hour belty amazing song that Megan Hilty did in the second season. Are you gonna sing a little riff because I don't know it? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a hum. Mm -mm. Just keep um. Da, na, 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 na. It it has all of this imagery about being at a racetrack. Oh. All right. Yeah, Look, it's really gonna... it, amazing. All right, everybody, go go on your computers and Google it. Before we leave you, Deborah, because you've been so kind with your time, I just want to know what a cause is that you want us to all know about because we love you so much and you do so much as a feminist <sighs> activist in this world. So we want to get back to you. Okay, everybody. Okay, everybody. You need to know about Pandemic of Love. Okay. Okay. You go to pandemicoflove.com. And it's this extraordinary thing that that my friend Shelly just created six weeks ago at her kitchen table, essentially f saying to people in need of of financial help because of COVID, um, you can you can sign in and say that you need help for rent or utilities or food or medication. It's anonymous, and then patrons i've done this then they they connect you with a patron who says okay i'm going to be your patron i'm going to pay for that for you oh. and and so they so far she has i think r raised eight million dollars and there were there have been 120,000 people involved in those exchanges and she has um she has uh i think there are 125 chapters of this now all over the world and it all happened at her kitchen table in florida and now pandemic of love is this thing that is that is literally saving people's oh that lives. is so i mean look at god i mean everybody okay pandemic of love pandemic of love of pandemic of love dot com and, and if you, you say what if, about the uk you can do it anywhere right anywhere and anywhere. um if you, if you would like to know more about shelly her Instagram is mindful skater um, <laughs> and she's amazing. Um, and uh, please, I mean, even if you just say, okay, I will pay for, you know, I have $20 to give, you know, someone will get $20 towards their grocery bill. Oh, you mindful skate. She's on. She's on. There, nice. a mindful skater, skater girl, mindful, mindful skater girl. Skater okay. girl. Oh my God! I'm really am senile. What's happening? You know what? It's 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 the ears. It's just as soon as you get your glasses fixed, the mind will come back. I yes, she it. is here. She yes, is. She is. She's right online. Mindful skater girl. So All right. So and follow her. Shelly, we and we she are gives here. updates every single day. Amazing. All right, you amazing, wonderful human being. I'm You're saying. amazing. You created makers. I mean, come on. Come, Come on. on. Well, I'm sending you love and and sanity and playfulness and good health. Same to you. Love you. I love Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.